Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy species-specific care and husbandry videos like this, as well as all things tarantula-related, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click the notification bell to turn on all notifications so you're alerted anytime I upload a new video. Now today, we're talking about one of my favorite species out there. It's a great beginner old-world tarantula, and one of the only tarantula species out there that can be kept communally in captivity. Monocentropus balfouri, known commonly in the hobby as the Socotra Island Blue Baboon, was described by Pocock in 1897 and is an old world terrestrial species that is native to the island of Socotra, about 150 miles east of the Horn of Africa. This area has a tropical to semi desert climate with fairly moderate temperatures and rainfall. Being from this island and secluded, this species has evolved in ways unlike other tarantulas. First, they have a very identifiable color pattern that makes them very recognizable. Also, they are known as the most communal tarantula in the hobby, as they have evolved into living in close quarters in their natural habitat. Though they haven't been witnessed living communally in the wild, they are one of a very few species of tarantulas that can live communally in captivity. This species has a medium growth rate with females reaching a maximum diagonal leg span of five to six inches within a few years, while males are a little bit smaller. There is some sexual dimorphism in this species, but it is not the most reliable way to determine the sex of your specimen. The best way to know if you have a male or female is to examine the inside of a molt. But some have reported that once a male has its ultimate molt and is fully mature and ready to mate, its carapace will be bright blue while females will be a gray or lighter blue. The reason that this isn't the best method is that I have seen many reports online from those with first-hand knowledge saying their males never developed the bright blue carapace upon maturing. These spiders have a fairly mellow temperament for an old world tarantula. They can be very fast and are prone to bolt when startled or when they feel threatened. But in general, they are relaxed and laid back, especially with other specimens in a communal setup, having been observed by many keepers sharing a roach or cricket as they feed. This species is an opportunistic burrower, meaning that they will prefer to burrow down into the substrate, but they will also web up the entrance of their burrow and expand their webbing throughout their enclosure and almost seem semi-arboreal like the green bottle blue or orange baboon tarantula. One of the amazing aspects of this species is that not only can they be kept communally, but you can keep them with other embalfouries from different egg sacs. And there have even been multiple reports of people beginning communals by mixing slings and juveniles. It is probably best when deciding to keep specimens of different sizes together communally to make a new enclosure and move everyone into the new home as opposed to just dropping them into an enclosure that one tarantula has already settled into. And it seems that once a female has matured, if she is not already in a communal setup, she will be less likely to adjust and may not be able to cohabitate peacefully with other specimens. And it is definitely not recommended to try to house a mature female and mature male together if they were not raised together in a communal setup. I have one blue baboon that I got a few years ago that I kept by itself in an enclosure and I rarely see it out and about. But I also have a communal setup with spiderlings and I almost always see two or three of them roaming around. Occasionally, I will even find all five of them out in plain view. I keep my spiderlings in my usual spiderling acrylic enclosure that is taller than it's wide. I fill it half to three quarters with substrate like cocoa fiber, peat moss, or a mix of the two, and provide a water dish, a hide, and a few little branches or plants for the spider to use as anchor points for its webbing. I keep the water dish full, and once every week or two will overflow the water so the corner of the enclosure has damp substrate to help keep things a little more humid than the ambient humidity of the room. If I didn't have a water dish or it's too webbed over, I will drip water on its web every couple of days, but not too much so I avoid flooding its burrow. I keep 
these slings, just like all my spiderlings, in my spiderling nursery that has a temperature a few degrees higher than the average room temperature in my home. I find this helps the spiderling survival rate and growth rate slightly. And you can see a video on how I set this up linked in the top right corner. For juveniles, I move them into my basic juvenile style enclosure that you've seen in many of my other videos. Again, I make sure it's filled at least halfway with substrate to provide the tarantula with plenty of depth to burrow. I supply a hide and use some plants to use as web anchors and give them a water dish that I keep full. I don't worry too much about keeping the substrate a little damp at this size as they tend not to mind more arid conditions, but occasionally I will still overflow the water dish. I currently keep my adult in a three gallon Zoomed creature enclosure filled up about halfway with substrate and provide hides, cork bark, plants, and a water dish. I keep the substrate dry and overflow the water dish a little every month or so. I plan on moving this specimen into a larger enclosure once I'm able to determine its sex. If it is a female, I will most likely keep her in a five gallon style enclosure. Though if it is male, I will most likely send him off to breed rather than rehouse him. A good rule of thumb for enclosures for tarantulas of any size is to make sure that there is a minimum of three times the leg span of the T in the surface area of the enclosure. As for my communal, I keep my five spiderlings in a small acrylic enclosure similar to the size of my normal juvenile enclosures. This was actually the enclosure they were originally housed in when I purchased this communal from Fear Not Tarantulas at the NARBC in October of 2019. As for the final enclosure for my communal, as they mature into adults, I've not got that far yet, so you will need to keep watching to get updated on that aspect of their husbandry. Though you can check out Tom's Big Spiders, Dark Den, or Tarantula Haven for more info and experience on how they keep their communals. I will have links to their videos down below in the description, so be sure you check those out. As far as feeding is concerned, I started my first spiderling out with flightless fruit flies or flower beetles twice a week, but once it was over a half inch, I started feeding her one or two small crickets every five to seven days. They are voracious eaters and will quickly take down prey, though sometimes they can be a little skittish and will run and hide when I open the enclosure, and they're not easy to coax out. On those occasions, I will drop the feeder in the enclosure and check back the next day and remove any uneaten prey that's still in there. If the tarantula is in primal, it is common for it to go weeks without eating, in which case I am sure to remove uneaten prey immediately and wait about three to five days after a molt before attempting to feed again. For juveniles, I feed a small dubia roach under an inch or two medium crickets every seven to 10 days. I remove any uneaten prey or pieces of prey that are left over within 24 hours. If the tarantula is in pre-molt, I do not leave any uneaten prey in its enclosure and I wait seven to 10 days after a molt before attempting to offer food. I give it plenty of time to harden up. And for adults, I feed my blue baboon one dubia roach a little over an inch or four to five adult crickets every 10 to 14 days. I tend to feed a little more after a molt and less often the closer the tarantula is to pre-molt. This is obviously a stunning and unique tarantula and a great addition to any collection for keepers of immediate to higher levels of experience. Though this is a more docile species, I would not recommend it to new keepers as its speed and venom can be a little intimidating. But if you are ready to transition to old world species, this would make a great species to begin with. Keeping them communally may take a little more experience dealing with old world species before taking that on in your collection. The care and husbandry would essentially be the same but the challenging aspect would be rehousing the communal. Trying to transfer multiple embalfories from one enclosure to another can be very stressful and difficult and can lead to one or two of them bolting out or even giving a threat pose. So having plenty of experience rehousing old world tarantulas would be ideal before attempting to take on a communal. Well, this is a fascinating species and I'm so glad I finally got my communal set up and running. As time goes on, I'll be sure to keep you updated and post videos about the progress of my communal. And I highly suggest checking out the videos I linked down below in the description if you wanna get more info on the Balfouri communals. Now, everything that I've shared with you here is my experience. This is just how I keep my tarantulas and how I feed them. I'm not saying this is the definitive way to feed or care for this species. You'll need to find your own feeding schedule, what works best for you and for your tarantulas. Some people feed their tarantulas more often and others feed them only once a month. It's really just gonna depend on your schedule and your tarantula's needs. So use my experience as just a starting point and go out 
out and find other information from other sources and use this collective information to come up with the best strategy for caring for your tarantula. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. It means a lot to me and it helps future keepers find this information further on down the line. If you want to support the channel, make sure you subscribe and share this video with your friends. I upload new videos every Tuesday for Tarantula Tuesday. I'd love to have you back. I'll leave a couple of playlists linked at the end of this video if you want to keep watching my content. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, but I think I'm going to go sit in my chair back here and just watch my communal for a little while. So I will see you next Tuesday. Ha, 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 ha.